This is um, an irreverent poem. It is by Robert Service. It is situated in the Yukon. So for you Robert Service lovers, here it comes. It's, you're going to get it again. Um, and this is, I don't want to say politically incorrect, but it's, uh, it's just, I mean, it's, I'm going to do it. I love this poem. It's, it's so passe masculine, but so my apologies to political correctness. Well, we'll just get it. All right, uh, more words though. Uh, the, uh, because the lead character is named Jack McPherson. That's McPherson, don't you know? And picture when you hear of him, Sean Connery. Did we see anybody see the movie The Highlander years ago with uh, Christopher Lambert? It's a kind of a sci-fi thing. Well, picture Sean in his, in his quilt and the whole thing. And he was six foot four. And as I remember from reading an article when I was a teenager, I think he had a 44 inch chest. I mean, he was a big dude. And um, anyway, um, the key to this is St. Andrew's, Andrew's Day. There's a, going to be a festival for St. Andrew's Day. The, the, uh, St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland and the date that such things would normally ha happen. So the poems open with a meeting talking about this festival that's coming. I don't think, I, I have not done this poem here. I, I guarantee it since I started doing this in what, 2017? And I, I don't think I've done this. Anyway, the, the phrase tartan to chill. Tartan is crisscross, typical patterns of clothing for them. And a chiel is a young man. The words derive from child. Pibrocks, traditional dirges of, of uh, or martial music for bagpipes. Uh, the phrase Doc and Doris, the line says, drink down your Doc and Doris. And it's the parting drink for the door. The Doc and Dor, the Doc and Doris. And I've asked, every time I hear someone from the British Isles, I say, what's Doc and Doris mean? And you've got to find somebody that's older than I am that knows what it means. Uh, gird up your loins and uh, encircle yourself with a belt to, to preparing for battle, for action. Bra, what a great word, B-R-A-W. Dressed in a fine manner, don't you know? Grizzled son of Sky. Sky is the northernmost island of the Inner Hebrides island chain, which isn't important, but you're, it's part of the poem. It's got to rhyme. Kami T. Did anybody see the movie The Quiet Man? They're talking about the committee, the committee. Ward Bond, does anybody remember Ward Bond was in that movie, was the priest, the priest from Wagon Train uh, fame? Uh, it's fun to have people that know these things. You know. <laughs> the youths, the youths of today don't know these things. Um, committee. Sporan, a pouch used with a pocketless quilt. Uh, did I say quilt? Kilt. I'm sorry, I'm, that's a, two poems ago. Uh, Hibernia, Ireland, which was never incorporated into the Roman Empire, kind of the, where the, probably where the idea of God created whiskey to keep the Irish from ruling the world. But so so the, the, the Romans didn't go across there. And then Hadrian, the emperor, built Hadrian's Wall to keep the Picts from coming down from Scotland because they didn't want to fuss with those people either. So... Uh, that's a little hint about this story. Uh, oh, and McCrimmon's Lament that I have to explain. This, it's a famous pipe tune written by Donald Ben McCrimmon, uh, who was um, supporting the Clan MacLeod, the third and last movie reference, Braveheart. Um, Mel Gibson, who is not such a nice guy in person, especially if you're a member of the opposite sex, I've been told. But, but he is a good actor, and he did a Good job in that part. But anyway, they were fighting against King James II, who was a one bad dude. Uh, Grampian, former name of the region of Northeast Scotland, Sassnox, Scottish term for Englishman derived from the word Saxon. My guess is it's not a complimentary term, but I don't know that. And then finally, finally, last words, thistle and shamrock, the national emblems of Scotland and Ireland. Without further ado, the ballad of how McPherson held the floor. Said President McConaughey to Treasurer McCall, 
We ought to have a piper for our next St. Andrew's ball. Yon squawkin' saxophone gives me the syncopated gripes. I'm sick of jazz. I want to hear the skirling of the pipes. Alas, it's true, said Tam McCall. The young folks of today are foxtrot mad and dinner can a reel from Strass Bay. Now what we want's a kilty lad primed up with Mountain Dew to strut the floor at supper time and play a lilt or two. In all the North, there's only one. Of him I've heard them speak. His name is Jock McPherson, and he lives on Boulder Creek, an old-time hard rock miner, a wild and wastrel loon who spends his nights in glory paying pib rocks to the moon. I'll seek him out beyond a doubt on next St. Andrew's night. We'll proudly hear the pipes to cheer and charm our appetite. Oh, lads were neat and lassies sweet who graced St. Andrew's ball, but there was none so full of fun as Treasurer McCall. And as Maloney's ragtime band struck up a newest hit, he smiled a smile behind his hand and chortled, wait a bit. And so with many a Celtic snort, with malice in his eye, he watched the merry crowd cavort till supper time drew nigh. Then gleefully he seemed to steal and sought the nugget bar wherein there sat a tartaned chill as lonely as a star, a huge and hairy highlandman as hearty as a breeze, a glass of whiskey in his hand, his bagpipes on his knees. Drink down your dock and Doris, Jack, cried Treasurer McCall. The time is right to up and pipe, they wait you in the hall. Gird up your loins and grit your teeth, and uh, here's a pint of hooch. To mind you of your native heath, just put it in your pooch. Play on and on for all you're worth. You'll shame us if you stop. Remember you're of Scottish birth. Keep piping till you drop. I, though a bunch of willy boys should bluster and implore, for the glory of the Highlands lad, you've got to hold the floor. The dancers were at supper and the tables groaned with cheer when President McConaughey exclaimed, What do I hear? Methinks it's like a chanter, and it's coming from the hall. It's Jock McPherson tuning up, cried Treasurer McCall. So up they jumped with shouts of glee and gaily hurried forth, said they, We never thought to see a piper the north. I, all the lads and lassies bra went buzzing out like bees, and Jock McPherson there they saw with red and rugged knees. Full six foot four, he strode the floor, a grizzled son of sky, with glory in his whiskers and with whiskey in his eye. With scalping stride and Scottish pride, he towered above them all. And is he no a bonny sight, said Treasurer McCall. Well, President McConaughey was fairly daft with glee, and there was jubilation in the Scottish committee, but the dancers seemed uncertain, and they signified their doubt by dashing back to eat as fast as they had darted out. And someone raised the question, twixt the coffee and the cakes, does the piper walk to get away from all the noise he makes? Then reinforced with fancy food, they slowly trickled forth and watched in patronizing mood the piper of the North. Proud, proud was Jock McPherson as he made his bagpipe skirl and he set his sopran swinging and he gave his kilts a whirl and President McConaughey was jumping like a flea and there was joy and rapture in the Scottish committee. Just let them have their saxophone with contemplated squall. We're having heaven's music now, said Treasurer McCall. But the dancers waxed impatient and they rather seemed to fret for Maloney and the jazz of his Hibernian quartet. Yet little wrecked the piper as he swung with head on high, lamenting with McCrimmon on the heather hills of sky. With highland passion in his heart, he held the center floor. I, Jack McPherson, played as he had never played before. Maloney's Irish Melodist were sitting in their place, and as Maloney waited, there was wonder in his face. 
'twas sure the gorgeous music. Golly, wouldn't it be grand if he could get the McPherson as a member of his band? But the banchers moped and mumbled as around the room they sat. We paid to dance, they grumbled, but we cannot dance to that. Of course, we're not denying that it's really splendid stuff, but it's mighty satisfying. Don't you think we've had enough? You've raised a pretty problem, answered Treasurer McCall. For on St. Andrew's night you can, the piper rules the ball, said President McConaughey. You said a solemn thing. Tradition holds him sacred, and he's got to have his fling. But soon, no doubt, he'll weary out. Have patience, bide a wee. That's right, respect the piper, said the Scottish committee. And so McPherson stalked the floor, and fast the moments flew, until a half an hour went past as irritation grew and grew. Then the dancers held a council. And with faces fiercely set, they hailed Maloney heading his Hibernian quartet. It's long enough we've waited. Come on, Mike, play up the blues. And Maloney hesitated, but he didn't dare refuse. So banjo and piano and guitar and saxophone contended with the shrilling of the chanter and the drone, and the women's ears were muffled, so infernal was the din, but McPherson was unruffled, for he knew that he would win. Then two bright boys jazz round him, and they sought to play the crown, but McPherson jolted sideways, and the sassnacks went down, and as if it was a signal with a wild and angry roar, the gates of wrath were rhythm. Yet McPherson held the floor. I amid the rising tumult, still he strode with head on high, with ribbons gaily streaming, yet with battle in his eye. Amid the storm that gathered, still he stalked with highland pride, well treasurer and president sprang bravely to his side. And with ire and indignation that was glorious to see around him in a body ring the Scottish committee, their teeth were clenched in flurry, Fury, their eyes with anger blazed. Young man, I touch the piper, was the slogan that they raised. Then blows were struck, and men went down. Yet mid the rising fray, McPherson towered in triumph, and he never seemed to play. Alas, his faithful followers were but a gallant few, and faced defeat, although they fought with all the skill they knew. For President McConaughey was seen to slip and fall, and o'er his prostrate body stumbled Treasurer McCall. And as their foes with triumph roared and leaguered them about, it looked as if their little band would soon be counted out. For eyes were black and noses red, yet on that field of gore, as resolute as Highland Rock, McPherson held the floor. Maloney watched the battle, and his brows were bleakly set, while with him paused and panted his Hibernian quartet. For sure it is an evil spite, and breaking to the heart, for Irishmen to watch a fight, and not be taking part. Then suddenly on high he soared and tightened up his belt, and shall we see them crush, he roared, a brother and a Celt, a fellow artiste needs our hand. Come on, boys, take a hand, and down into the melee dashed Maloney and his band. Now, though it was St. Andrew's ball, yet men of every race that bow before the great god Jazz were gathered in that place. Yeah, there were those who grunt, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, and those who squeak, wee, oui, wee. Oui. Likewise, Dutch Dago, Swede and Finn, Polak and Portuguese, yet like right gale before, grain before the gale, that national hodgepodge went down before the fury of the Irish and the Scotch. Aye, though they closed their gaping ranks and rallied to the fray, to the shamrock and the thistle went the glory of the day. You should have seen the carnage in the drooling light of 
God, nobody writes like this. Drooling light of dawn, yet mid the scene of slaughter, Jack McPherson playing on, though all lay low about him, yet he held his head on high and piped as if he stood upon the collar crags of sky. His face was grim as granite, and no favor did he ask, though weary were his empty lungs and empty was his flask. And when a fallen foe wailed out, say, when will you have done? McPherson grinned and answers, Hoots, she's only half begun. I, though his hands were bloody and his knees were gay with gore, a gampian, a grampian of island pride, McPherson held the floor. And still in Yukon valleys, where the silent peaks look down, they tell of how the piper was invited up to town. And he whipped in kilted glory, and he piped before them all, but wouldn't stop his piping till he busted up the ball. Of that Homeric scrap they speak, and how the fight went on with Sally and with Raleigh till the breaking of the dawn and how the piper towered like a rock amid the fray, and the battle surged about him, but he never ceased to play. I, by the lonely campfires, still they tell the story o'er, how the Sassnack were vanquished, and McPherson held the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We, we, we should quit there so we can all get on to happy hour.